Welcome to Seymour from the Front Pew podcast, coming to you from the broadcast studio at Seymour First Baptist Church in Seymour, Tennessee, and featuring thoughts and discussions around loving God, loving others, making disciples, and living the life. I am your host, Tiger Brooks, and now on to the podcast. All right, I'm unmuting myself before I start talking. <laughs> it's only happened one time. I know. It's out of the many ones that we've done. It's uh, it's incredible that that's only happened once. If a friend had been here and heard it, he just hit Listen. mute. But. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, good morning. Let's not <laughs> maybe not be morning when you're listening to this. I should not. I should never do that. I'm a professional. Uh, <laughs> never, over. never, never time stamp these things. Start over. Uh, at any rate, hello. Thank Good you day. for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And uh, so today we are coming to the close of season two. Uh, I'll just kind of throw that out there. We're not exactly sure when it's going to close, but probably sometime in the next couple of weeks. We're going to take a break for the summer and then we'll come back with season three in the fall. However, we wanted to uh, talk about this particular topic today because it's it's kind of a big deal in the life of our church. On April 28th, Sunday evening, we had an opportunity. The vision team was able to come together and to share the master plan uh, that has been uh, almost a year in the making. Um, many, many meetings, many prayers, um, partnership with uh, our design partner visioneering and um we're going to tell you you know where you can find all these things that we're about to talk about but it was a big deal uh it was it was a wonderful evening i thought it was well received um as we kind of walked through many of the things a lot of this is really a no-brainer for our church because it's a felt need. I mean, it's like, yes, this should have been done six months ago. What what are we waiting on? It's kind of like that. But uh, Pastor Corey, won't you uh, jump out there? And, and yeah, you know, um, about it. I think uh, it was. I think people are seeing the need for what is there, and so that is something that we um, have not had a lot of trouble people getting on board with and. And seeing, um, it, it is, um, I, I think uh, we, we have some challenges still ahead of us as we think about, you know, uh, it's one thing to understand a need. It's one thing to move that need from concept and thought to actually getting it done. And so that really is what is uh, right before us at this point in time. As, uh, as I think about the process of it all, and, and we went into it um that Sunday night, but I I think the thing that excited me about the process is that I really think that who we are, um, and and again, we talk about that being meaning vision, mission, mission, vision values continued to drive this process. And and I think from beginning to end, I I think we looked at a lot of different things. I think, um, you know, uh, we talked about things like the soccer fields and, and that area playground uh, track or were those things, on the table or not. And, uh, you know, with mission vision values that they really weren't Um, with uh, I would say, as we talked about architectural firms and who we interviewed and what we went through and um, that when we went through that process and we talked to three different companies um, and uh, two of those very specifically church architecture companies um, that we we found the one that seemed to fit us or where we're going best, maybe even understood us best, that they did their own research to understand who we were and, and what we were looking at and those types of things. And so um, that was exciting to me. And um, it wasn't just a, a pick who we think can get it done or uh, who can get it done the cheapest or the fastest or any of those types of things, but it was a it was really a, a, a look at... Um, who do we think will help us design something that fits us where we are, what we're doing, what we value uh, best and most. Mm. So uh, that, that's one of the things I think that really stood out to me through the process. Um, so um, I, I would say process was not without its hiccups. Um, uh, when you're trying to get six people plus our staff that could be there 
on board um, and regular. Um, it, it was not always easy. Um, it, that's probably part of the reason why it took so long. Um, yeah. I'll take, I'll take part of that. My schedule is not the easiest either. And so, um, it's been an interesting year. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Thrown honestly, onto committees we weren't expecting and that type of stuff. So right. yeah. when you consider everything that, that was, we were kind of up against, it's, I mean, it's not, not a bad timetable no. really. Um, there's m- many of the things you were involved with. So uh, some of the key things that we want to talk about today, you know, we've, God has been blessing us and we've talked about that a number of times in different podcasts in different ways. And that, that blessing in part has, has resulted in growth numerically and, uh, which presents problems. We've got, I guess you could say ingress and egress issues because we have one entrance and we have directional parking right now. And you can only come in one way and you go out one way. <laughs> and that that causes there to be a lot of congestion on Sunday mornings, especially when you consider the fact that we're on a main thoroughfare, a main highway out of one of the vacation capitals of the United States. And uh, it just happens that, you know, they release right before our services get yeah. out on a Sunday morning. And it creates a lot of congestion. And you can sit in our parking lot anywhere from 25 to 45 minutes waiting to get out on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And that's that's frustrating, especially for visitors. So that's an issue. Parking itself is an issue. We've got more people coming now, uh, and that means more, more cars out there. And there are Sundays where we have three or four spots open uh, at, at the peak. And that works against us to a certain extent because not a lot of people are going to hunt and peck all those three <laughs> those three or four spots out, yeah. and, and that could result in somebody taking off down the road. Not great. Uh, and we've got educational um, space and worship space issues. So all of those things are laid out and, and, and talked about in this master plan as we talk about some expansion uh, in things in different areas. Uh, and that means something different for everybody around this table. And we're going to kind of talk about that. But let's talk, let's talk, start with the initial phase. Yeah. So the initial phase is, um, I've called it three main areas. It's almost two, but... It's the entrances and exits, the parking that we would add, and that um, that parking that we would add on the initial phase is not the total amount of parking we would add no. through all of the phases. Which Once, is a question that was asked. It was asked, rightly yes. so. Yeah. So if we um, if we talk about the end game, total spaces will go up by almost four or five hundred spaces. Initial phase, we're hoping that it will catch. And it's hard to know these things exactly until we get to real site plans. This is a uh, this is a concept site plan or concept plan, um, but we're hoping that that will increase 150 to 200 spaces with this initial phase, um, and then um, and then a a, uh, a renovation, an upgrade for our kids ministry check in foyer area. I don't know what to call it, but but I think that it will actually open up our foyer um, to just filling. Um, uh, more spacious and more welcoming um, and make it easier for our kids and their families to be able to get into our kids ministry area uh, uh, efficiently, but really still keeping safety in mind um, as far as um, that that kids ministry check-in still having a little bit of um, separation from back into the kids area, into the classrooms itself and all of those things. And so uh, really excited about those um uh, we still uh, are searching for what that will cost. I mean, we, we don't know. We are we are working. Uh, even um, uh, today, I know some phone calls are happening to be able to try to make sure that we've got the right people that can help us to estimate those things and get those things into place. And um, and uh, in the middle of all that, yet we know, again, a key part of that is to uh, be driving fundraising for uh, for this initial phase so that we can move it along as quickly as, as possible. And so um, those are the big areas for it. I, I think, you know, um, we talk about the entrances and exits. We talk, we think about Sunday morning because that's when we really see it as an issue. Um, the reality is there's not a lot we can do about Chapman Highway traffic, right? I mean, like uh, Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, they are still going to have checkout time at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And that's going to be when a lot of people are checking out. There's not a lot we can do about that unless you can somehow 
you know, hack the Google algorithm <laughs> and get them to move, you know, traffic flow somewhere different. Um, but we, it, it, those entrances and exits will help on Sunday morning. There may still be some traffic issues as far as people trying to turn out left. Um, my suggestion for anyone local is turn right. Yep. Yes. Turn right. Go down to North Rogers and then turn left. Yeah. And you can find your way back around wherever you want to go. But um, uh, it's not just Sunday morning. Uh, oh, yeah. in MVP. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this, the entrances and exits actually makes our parking lot a lot safer for the kids that are walking and going to our practices and our games because the back of our parking lot um, no longer has to fight every car that comes through our parking lot. And so I think it becomes a safer place uh, for people to be. Um, I think um, it opens it up for a continuation of things like our farmer's market and uh, and MVP and our food truck uh, uh, rallies that we do and and those types of things to where um, we can continue to, um, to... be active in finding ways to to be a resource and a help to our community um, in, in a way that is safe and is good. And we're not having to juggle, well, what can be here these days and what can't be because of space and parking and, and all right. those types of things. So uh, we're going to go to Jason. Then we're going to go to Austin, who was – who was woefully uh, underrepresented in our Silence. master plan report. And we're going to let him do all the talking he wants to here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but Jason, um, the kids thing, part of the initial phase, uh, the kids check in lobby area. Um, talk about some of the obstacles that we currently have and what this is going to alleviate. Yeah. So, you know, anybody who's been back there, done that, at, and I mentioned this uh that night uh any lady who has had to go to the bathroom (laughs) during check-in time right before service um right before sunday school um our our entrance into the kids area is one door and it is one door right next to uh the the door to the women's bathroom in our four year four year area so um, there's just a lot of congestion that ends up right there and so it's one of those things that kind of kind of becomes a little bottleneck. Um, people going in and out, even at the end of service, people going in to get their kids, and then people trying to come out having picked their kids up. and 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 folks have done great. Uh, don't don't hear me saying that you know we've had these major problems. It's just trying to make the flow better. It's trying to help um, kind of alleviate some of the the congestion that happens with inside our own building. We talk about the congestion outside in the parking lot and the entrance and exits. Uh, but this is one of those spaces on the inside that uh, does have some congestion. And so the, the goal is, is there's, is basically opening that up to really more, um, I would say bigger than French door space, um, entrance into the, uh, into the kids area and, uh, and then moving, moving the women's, um, bathroom door, uh, to the front side so that those two don't conflict and, and, and cause um, congestion with each other. But uh, one of the things that I think is is really exciting, even about um, that, yes, the the opening that up, uh, allowing the flow and the just the, the movement to be better, um, but allowing us to have more designated space for check-ins, which is looking at the safety of our kids, um, uh, wanting to make sure how we um, – how we talk with first time visitors that are coming in it's 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 opening all that up to really help us to uh, to meet the needs and to engage with our families um, better mm-hmm. um, and also on top of that I think as we it, it's not really going to extend out into the foyer but I think there's going to be an element that that room that's right there is gonna go away and is really going to become part of the entrance into the kids area yeah which is something that we can begin to expand kind of the uh, the kids area, again, not out into the foyer specifically, but allows for folks to see first-time visitors, but also just our church members in general, uh, to be able to see what is taking place in the life of the kids' ministry. Yeah, it um, becomes more obvious. Yeah. Oh, that's where I take my kids. Yeah, it's very, very clear, so. and it opens up the lobby in such a way that it just feels, even though you're not going to, yeah. uh, the majority of people are not going to be walking into that space 
it still feels open. Yeah. And yeah. and I think that that is going to is going to change the vibe yeah. quite a bit. Anyway. And it's even going to be, you know, we've got some things that that we want folks to engage with in terms of our kids ministry. And those are things like um, uh, we have, you know, calendars for every season of events and things that are going on. And um, we have probably the most important thing for me anyway, uh, that we want our families and, and folks to engage with is our uh, our scripture memorization um, packs, if you will, that are basically throughout the whole year. And those are things that we're going to be able to display, so yeah. to speak, kind more of in accessible. that area. Uh, they'll be more accessible, more more visible. Um, and so those are things that I'm excited about, especially with that entrance, to be able to kind of um, create a little bit of a, a awareness of, of what's taking place in the life of the kids' ministry. Because, I mean, our kids' ministry is growing leaps and bounds uh, we talked about it uh, that night as well that, uh, you know, four years ago we had anywhere from four to five classrooms that were open, not being used on Sunday mornings and even Wednesday nights. Um, now we are exp- we have expanded into every classroom on Sunday morning and on Wednesday nights we are now having to double up classes um, because they have, it, we've outgrown the space that we have in there. And so just helping folks to see the excitement of what is taking place in the life of, of the kids ministry in general, but also be able to engage our families best um, yeah. is really kind of the exciting part of, of the kids ministry side in, in terms of the initial phase. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's more for the kids ministry yeah. down the line, but this is, this is actually in the initial phase. And I think, um, and all of those are things that will immediately alleviate and allow for there to be additional growth yep. uh, for the time being, which gets us to the next phases. And, and that really kind of brings Austin and myself into the, into the conversation because really the initial phase is not going to do tremendous amount other than creating more space for, to get people on the property. Yep. Doesn't really increase education space. And, and your, your worship deal is going to be, you know, phase one, which is going to be a little bit further down the road, but let's just think and dream a little bit. Um, you know, some of the obstacles that we currently have in our room that, uh, where we gather for worship, uh, there are many, (laughs) if you've been here once, you understand that it's got some unique qualities, uh, the floor, the, the, you know, and the, the, the sight lines and the seating, uh, are kind of an issue when you get <laughs> down to the first rows. Um, and, and it's just unique. And then the room itself, Austin, um, there are some limitations. Uh, we increased our, our stage space, which we really needed to do because of the growing uh, worship ministry. And that's alleviated a little bit, but talk a little bit about what you're excited about as we think about the future, as these things begin to unfold in the master plan. Um, yeah, that's a tough. That's that, uh, that. There's a lot there. <laughs> that's a lot to digest. Um, yeah, I I don't know. Corey asked us in staff meeting what last week what we are most excited about, and I think my answer was just seeing like if we could fast forward X number of years, however long it's going to take us to get even just to a, a new sanctuary. It's how we will interplay a lot. A lot of churches that I have been to that are newer. Um, worship centers are either kind of, we call them black box. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's um, a very stage presence sound, sound um, um, oriented. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be very deadened in the space sound wise um, because they want to pump it through the system. Um, not a whole lot of like choir oriented worship centers, um, not a whole lot of beauty in the architecture. Um, or it's kind of, uh, there are a lot of churches that just look really similar to me. Um, mm-hmm. and so, um, I'm excited, I guess, to see what, what we wind up with at the end of it. I, I would say we don't build for like, for my taste or for any of our tastes, but we do build with a, an understanding of our character one of our characters is being musically driven, I think, and, um, and diverse and diverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you've got to create a space that is uh, understanding of that, that understands that you're going to have a choir 
and you're going to hopefully have a pretty big choir. So you got to design according to that. Um, also, I, I, we have such beauty all around us, um, how that's going to play into a worship center. Um, I don't, I, I don't have an answer for that, but I know that we're not going to have just some black box. We're not going to have some um, stock looking worship center. We're probably going to have one that acoustically would be very well, um, very nice. And then also that um, has some flexibility that we really, we're, we're very boxed in right now. Um, and that how, how are we going to do it that is aesthetically pleasing? Yeah. That, that excites me. Yeah. Um, yeah and I don't I, know how far down the road. I, I would even go on, like continuing that, yeah. that train of thought is that that is forward thinking beyond just our taste and our right uh, uh, and our ability like i think back to some unique uh, ours is obviously a very unique sanctuary right now mm-hmm. but I, I go back and i think about others that i can almost walk in and tell you um what decade they were built in because right. the architecture is very uh driven from that period of time i i tend to say we're i would want to stay away from that like that I want to be something that is more timeless, more timeless. Yes. I think that uh, I, uh, the what hits my head is traditional, but timeless is really the more correct thing because uh, we want it to, uh, my thought with the neck, with the first or with the sanctuary with phase one is that, that this is the sanctuary for the future of Seymour First Baptist Church mm-hmm. and that that future extends well beyond my generation. Yep. Um, just as it has been for a um, hundred years before. And so um, uh, hopefully doing that well enough um, right. th- that it can withstand renovations and it can withstand um, uh, sound changes and um, choirs growing and, and all of those types of things so that, so that it can uh, see ministry sustained and advancing the gospel sustained for for future generations. And, um, and so that, I I think again, like, like you said, when you begin to blend all of that together is it's hard to completely envision that to know what that really looks like. But I think it's neat and exciting to think, uh, I think that can be done. Mm -hmm. I think that can be done. I think we can put our heads together with uh, people that are creative and professionals in this area and go about seeing that accomplished. I think that's really an exciting thing. So. Yeah. I also think that um, I look back on, you know, I've been here for three and a half years. Corey's been here for almost four now. Um, and Jason's been here like 402. Um, <laughs> but um, Only next to Bob's 560. <laughs> yeah. no, it's, uh, um, I, um, so we, we say that we have challenges in our current sanctuary, and we, we really, really, really do. But also, I think our sanctuary, we, we forget. I mean, it, it is beautiful. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of really good um, character. It's got a lot of good character to it. It's got a lot of bad character at times. But it's got a lot of really good character and beauty that, it, uh, that I personally, I believe, sanctuary should have architectural beauty to inspire you to worship on some level. Um, but anyway, um, I look at... Um, that the church has been on this very long journey of giving the building a facelift that started before any of us were here. Um, and you look around and most of that is done. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got new paint everywhere. You've got new carpet or flooring everywhere. Um, some of those little things I, I give credit, Corey, you kind of see, see the long picture. I'm a, much more of the person the do what's right in front of my face kind of thing. <laughs> person. Um, and so I look at each one of the little steps we made, like one of the, <clears throat> when I first came in January 20, if March of 2021, we did the sound system upgrade, mm-hmm. which was a massive leap forward for where we were. Yeah. But now it is not getting done what we needed to get yeah. done. Yeah. And so it's, it's stuff like that, which is, it's really cool to look back on that, all the little steps we have made over the last umpteen years um, are now, they have been extremely important for the time and have really helped where we are. Because if, if we were still, you know, 
if we were still 350, 400, which would have still been a great improvement. Or I think as if far we as we were growth. where we are now yeah. numerically, but the building was where it was three oh, years ago. Yeah, we, oh my gosh, yeah, we'd be up the creek yeah. in some yeah. areas. Um, but um, now we've got the little steps are done. Now we've got to make some really big steps. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't know. I've, I've had cool two friends. I've had two friends in our sanctuary in the last two weeks. Um, both different backgrounds, but both pastors or former pastors. Um, and um, one of them <laughs> almost came specifically to see our sanctuary. I mean, like, I'm just, uh, and um, rumors, so rumors of it. Yeah. Had and so um, uh, we walk in and one of them, uh, again, um, both of them comment on, y'all have done really, really well renovating this space, the, the stage, the feel, the look, the, no, we didn't renovate the stained, stained glass, but the stained glass is, uh, it, it goes well with the sanctuary. It looks good. It has a nice aesthetic, the carpet, the pews, the chair, um, those things have been done really, really well, which has allowed us to continue and to build uh, growth. But then one of them is from a music background and he looks up and knows what the floor is doing. And he's like, this is a huge acoustical nightmare, and we're like, yeah. "Yes, we know." So anyway, but uh, and we've we've done a lot of things that have um, improved that, and our guys do a great job of managing that really, really well. But because of all that, we also get things that happen. It's like gremlins that you don't know where they're going to pop out every Sunday. There's something that yeah. is different and going on. We were chasing so one Sunday and we still were, haven't figured it and out. I think this is where nobody people don't know this, so. Um, you know, if you back up a year and a half, two years for us, um, we, um, gosh, if, if you back up two and a half years, we got a new piano in the worship center and we invested money. We, I had X number of dollars I was trying to spend. I really wanted a real, I wanted a nine foot grand. We really couldn't do that. So what we did was we bought the piano that we currently have, but invested in the top of the line microphone for the piano to try and really enhance the sound in the sanctuary. So we bought the most expensive piano microphone on the market, and it's, by and large, everybody says, this is what you need, this is what you need. Well, we put it in, and if many of you remember, especially in the winter, we would get this pop that would happen yep. every time the choir would stand up. And we spent, I cannot tell you how many hours with, chasing, trying to figure out what with professional sound engineers. I mean, the guys that do this for a ground, living. Yeah. We went underneath the stage and ran a ground through the entire under the stage. We had uh, I had guys come in and spend hours chasing that pop, trying to find it. Come to think of, and we sent the microphone back to the manufacturer twice. And at the end of the day, the answer that we came up with after like a year of chasing that sound was. Your sound system is good. That mic is good. The piano is good. The room is okay. But when you put them together, they just don't like each other. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, you can't find the problem. It's just that all they can't agree. So we had to get rid of that piano mic. We got in new piano mics. The pop is gone, but it is constant. Like yesterday, Corey was saying, we were chasing this buzz all through rehearsal. We'll come in. And so there's something, there's some kind of booger. <laughs> There's like a gremlin, like you said, or or a bird. The birds get caught <laughs> yeah. in the in the ceiling up there in the choir room. If you've never been back there, so maybe one of the birds ate something or something. But um, and all that to give great encouragement, stuff, but, yeah, great yeah. encouragement to our guys and girls that run those things yeah, because yeah. they really do an amazing job. Um, um, well, but and I would say this from the standpoint: I am the least musically inclined person in this room. No. All right. I will I will admit that across the board. It, it it's because of your taste in music from the early probably yeah. the early it's aughts. Ruined, the it's, early two thousand aughts. It's ruined the acoustics in my own ears. <laughs> you can't hear that anything. Tupac. All that Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, is you know, I you know, I listen I listen to y'all have these conversations and, and and talking about the room and and we have heard even in our in in our visioning meetings as we've talked about improvement on sanctuary and needing to to do these things and and sometimes the comment has been made you know why do we need to do anything with this this it, it is great it is significantly better than it ever has been and 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 that and I'm sitting in the room kind of in the same ballpark um thinking that same thing that like I 
I don't hear the issues now. The reality is I see the issues because I'm usually there when you're trying to fix them and do yeah, that. Right. And I think twofold on this, it's a credit to, I think, our folks and, and, and the way that we've done that we've maybe hidden some of those issues and, and done the best we can with what we have. But I would say from my standpoint, when I'm sitting there listening to the conversation about what's needing to be done, I know that I don't have the ear. I know that I can sit in the room and I'm thinking, you know what, this is awesome and this is this is great. And the worship is fantastic. And and I, I you know, I can sit in this room and, and there's nothing distracting me, at least musically. There might be other things distracting me. But there's nothing musically or uh taking place in the worship that distracts me. But I also know what my ear is, and I know y'all's ear, and I, I am willing to say and able to say, you know, I trust those who know better than me. I trust those who have the ear better than me to say, we want to do this to the best of our ability so that we're doing it in such a way that is honoring to the Lord and 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 continues to do that. And so that's, I would just kind of add to this and yeah. in this whole conversation that the vast majority of people probably sit in the room like, I don't hear this. I don't see this. It's twofold. Number yeah. one, we we have to trust those who are in the positions to to know and understand this is uh, to do the best we can with this. And number two, to recognize that it's because of the work that's taking place behind the scenes to prevent anyone from knowing and hearing yeah. that these things are taking place. So I just yeah. wanted to kind of add that. Yeah. No, I think that's good. And and then I would say in all of that is come back to the reason for a sanctuary for phase one is. Uh, goes back to vision values where we started in that we want to be together in one yep. worship service. And if we are going to continue to grow, we need a sanctuary that will seat more people yeah. and um, and that will allow us to come back into one. And um, And with that, I would say we also have tried to think through, pray through, uh, specifically as pastors, uh, staff together, um, where we see our most effective cap Mm -hmm. being i hate to say a cap a lid uh uh and that is not to say that we we don't reach people anymore but it it is to say that somewhere along the way we change our strategy and we begin a multiplication style of a strategy instead of just an addition style of strategy and Mm -hmm. and so um but but there's some things that we need to get right and healthy and and moving in the right direction in order to be able to do that and um and so uh, with all of that, the vision team and our, our staff together, along with visioneering has said, this is how we've identified. This is where we move this way, how we get this way. And, and really a, a sanctuary is more than just a sanctuary that's larger. It's a, it's an ability to come into other areas inside the current building, uh, which uh, again has served really, really well and will be able to be renovated into uh, uh, specific spaces for, our other ministries like yeah. our youth ministry and our kids ministry and, uh, and um, uh, areas where we can take spaces that are currently square footage in the building and make them better, more dedicated spaces for those ministries for them to continue growing. And so that that's um, the exciting thing to me is that, it, you know, somebody can look at the master plan and say, well, there's only really one, one step to do. Well, it's not, hmm. yeah. One new adi- one big right. new addition, but lots of other steps that fall in behind that to be able yeah. to continue to empower uh, and to and to renovate and to do ministry in an effective and efficient way yeah. with the space that we have. So yeah, yeah. And so, so I was just going to say we've all uh, you're the moderator over there, but I ask you the same question that you asked me 45 minutes ago. Yeah. Like, what are you excited about? With well. I was going to say that. Is um, it a beard parlor? <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly. Um, Next to a cafe, coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all of these, it's it's kind of like that Rubik's Cube where you, you shift one and then other things have Affects to shift others. into place. Yeah, yeah. And so um, when that that building is created, which is the worship building, and you can see that on the master plan, it's not just the worship building. It's, it's a worship and our office spaces, which will be underneath. And a handful of med- other possible meeting rooms that get caught up in there uh, as well, but it's really kind of the backfill that happens that really helps my program out. And that is what that does is that once once we vacate the existing sanctuary and we're in the new sanctuary, the the existing sanctuary 
gets converted into student space, which really gives them for the very first time their own yeah. space again, yeah. um, because they've sort of been, they've grown out of the spaces that they once existed in. And now they le- kind of just, they're in the gym area. Kind it's of like this, they're wandering in the amor- wilderness. Amorphous yeah. <laughs> kind of just in there, just uh, kind there of moving around. Cloud of, cloud of fire. Yeah. <laughs> by day, <laughs> cloud of pillar of fire by night. Um, anyway, so eventually, and this is, this kind of gets into the, some nuances, but you know, in our existing gym, there's a walking track around the top. There's, there's, uh, the ability to floor that and make an entire second floor, which expands the kids space and allows the kids more opportunity. And that also allows adults more opportunity on the, on the bottom levels as well to create more education space. And so all of those moving pieces create more opportunity for us to grow our discipleship ministries in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, but again, one of the big things that I'm excited about, and I want to get to it before we run out of time is this is the outdoor space yeah, yeah. that, that we've, we've called it a lot of different things. I think on our master plan, it's kind of referred to as a, a town square sort of space. It's a, it's a public space, a green space that's kind of adjacent between our existing building and the building that is to come. And it, it happens to face the most picturesque part of our property looking at Bluff Mountain. And um, it is a space that could be a multi-use space. We could put a pavilion there. Uh, we could have worship services outside. We could have outdoor concerts. We could do outdoor baptisms. Um, there will be space for families just to, to gather together to, you know, have a picnic. Um, our D groups could meet outside. Our Sunday school classes could meet outside on a pretty Sunday. Um, it just really creates opportunity for community to exist and to expand, which again is part of our core values. Um, when, when it's just amazing to think about. Because if you just, I mean, anytime you drive on, I I still, I never take it for granted when I come to work every single day, I get out of my truck and I look and I was like, man, I get to, I get to live and work here. And I get to look at that, that, that beautiful Vista from our parking lot and it's not going anywhere. It's going to be there. And this enhancement is going to create opportunities that people that I don't think even wrap their mind around right now, but, but I can kind of see it and, and, um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm super excited about that, too. Uh, it's probably, if you talk about one area, it's probably one of my favorite areas because of the potential that I see with it. And um, um, there's there's a, a lot in a lot of different directions that, that are incredibly exciting. But um, to be able to have that as just flex, spa, I, I, like I love the idea of D groups meeting there regularly. There's, I think about it. There is nowhere like that in our community right now. No, and for the foreseeable future, I don't see one. I, I, like, I, I, you know, um, there's not a place that we're. I mean, the closest place where people can come together and gather outside um, for fellowship type of stuff is our is our playground, really, mm-hmm. um, because there's at least this the pavilion. There's a concrete area. Um, uh, moms can let their kids play or whatever else. But if you're not with kids you're probably not using that very much. And um, this is a place for a lot of different dynamics, demographics, purposes, reasons that can be used uh, regularly Mm -hmm. um, and, and create community, create relationships. I'd also say, you know, we've got a lot of stories of people who um, through the years have brought their kids to play soccer here or have walked on our track and then finally came in the building. Um, we've got stories about people who um, met here to, to carpool and finally broke down the barriers and felt like the, they needed to come in. We've had people who um, have pulled on the parking lot and just sat there um, and then felt the Lord uh, uh, convicting them. Right. We've, yeah. we've heard those stories numerous times over the, and we, we have created our property for that purpose. You think how much, um, so going back to what Corey said, originally we were talking about Sunday mornings in our parking lot, and then we talked about MVP. I don't experience our parking lot on Sunday mornings. I'm in yeah. before anybody, and I'm out after everybody. 
So I'm sure it's a little frustrating. I can't imagine that it competes with Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Um, Saturday mornings are not only chaos, but they're dangerous from time to time. I mean, I was trying to carry something through at rummage sale and somebody about hit me the other day carrying, I was carrying a chair through. And so I can only fathom what it's like with, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, so the MVP thing, if, if families are coming on here on Saturdays and they're dealing with the frustration that I deal with in the parking lot on Saturdays, um, if we can alleviate some of that frustration, not only does that open up that, that, that openness to, to consider this property safe again, but also that community area, if people are coming here left and right, how much more does that create that same Mm -hmm. thing that we're already trying to create of, Hey, I'm going to go have coffee at that cafe. Well, maybe that's what it takes for them to break down the barriers and just to walk that extra 10 feet into the building sometime. Yeah. Um, And I think that's the, that's what we're shooting for here. That's, it's not for, it it is for D groups to hang out. And I think that's cool. But again, it's not about us. It's not about us building a property for us. It's about us building a property to break down those barriers. I think it's just a continuation of the conversation we've had on this podcast, but even more about us using our property to get people to understand the gospel. Yeah. yeah. So. And I think it's, int- you know, um, w- we have to be careful. We've all heard stories of churches that become yep. inner focused. Yeah. yeah. That their perspective it, is about us. Their own empire. Right. And and even you can see, I mean, we've talked about it before. Sometimes you see that in the budget that, you know, everything becomes about it's it's all for us. And, and I think that's, I'm not knocking anything on that. That's that's just natural tendency in a lot of ways. And 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 if we're not careful as a church, we we lose sight that our purpose is still to bring glory to God and and to share the gospel. And and how do you do that if all you're doing is focusing inward? Not saying there aren't things in this master plan that are doing that. It is doing that from a standpoint of trying to build and trying to um, uh, to do things better and to do things more efficiently uh, within the life of the church. But there's a lot of times that folks may look at some of this outside stuff and the things that we would call the community-focused things and think, well, why do we need to do that? What's the purpose of that? And again, I think it's it's not just so that we can have this space and provide this space for a community, and yet we're the ones, quote-unquote, footing the bill for the community to have the space. It is, it is the perspective of this kingdom-driven mindset that um, we want to break down the barriers, to bring people in the doors, to break down the barriers, to have conversations, um, and, and just simply open doors to share the, the, the love of Christ and, and, and to open the doors to, to who God is and, and His love for others. And so I think that's something that's important for us to continue to wrap our minds around is that Yes, we want to do what we need to do within the life of the church, but there's also this this outside space that is expanding and growing. I mean, MVP and so many other things that we've done uh, just in the last four years alone to continue to uh, to take the steps. Again, MVP started 20-some years ago right. with that mindset, right. and it's just continuing to take those steps in that direction. I would also say that, there's aspects of the master plan. We didn't really didn't even talk about this yeah. on Sunday night. Right. In, in light of this conversation where we've landed with wanting to make ourselves even more inviting to yeah. the outside world yeah. um, is we recognize about this building. And this is not a knock against anybody that's that had a part in developing mm-hmm. this building or designing this building. But for the for the uninitiated who just pull on the p- parking lot for the first time, you don't really know where to go. Yeah, yeah. It's not plain. You know, yes, okay, there's glass there. There must be doors there. I'm going to walk that way. Mm-hmm. You may be able to figure that one out. But when we're done with this, there's going to be signage. There's going to be visual cues that say, this is, you know, this is where you yeah, come. That's where you go. Yep. And and that's going to be all the way around our building. And and I'm excited about that. Um that to say nothing of the uh, the things that we've also got going on here that that use our space the the farmers market it's a huge yeah. thing that happens here and I and I'm proud that we're a church that yeah. allows that to happen but this it's going to be kicked up a notch mm-hmm. when all this is done yeah. um, our food truck rally that we just started a couple of seasons ago I guess you could say 
um, which has kind of picked up some steam. I mean, this, it's going to get kicked up yeah. four or five notches, you know, with, with the advent of this town square area. And so anyway, uh, we're, we're 45 minutes in and we've not even said pickleball court yet. Yeah. I know. And we're not going to walk down that path, but it's possible. <laughs> we're going to have some pickleball courts. Uh, but anyway, we're all excited about what's happened, yeah. what God is doing in our yeah. midst. We're excited about this, uh, the master plan and that unfolding. We're just going to continue to pray through because now we're at the, we're, it gets getting down to the nitty gritty where yeah. it's, it's now just, we have to raise funds uh, to, yeah. to see these yeah. things and, through. And all of that to say, again, um, we welcome your questions. Uh, we welcome your excitement and your encouragement and, and all of those things. Um, we, we would encourage you, if you want to dive deeper into more of this, um, go check out uh, seymourfbc.org slash vision. Uh, you can watch that Sunday night. Uh, you can um, The booklet that we put out is just a fraction of what is of uh, the images and, and, and everything that is uh, on that site where you can download that PDF and look at that and everything. And then um, be prayerful. Be yeah. prayerful for our vision team. Um, our vision team has been voted um, to take uh, a step forward into implementing this initial phase. And so be praying for them, um, talk to them, encourage them. Um, and, um, and, uh, you know, again, my hope is that within the next month or so that we're seeing significant, um, steps toward, uh, moving this vision to reality. And that, that's what we, um, you know, uh, all along the way that that's really part of what it is. I mean, I, I think back to when, um, uh, even, even let's say when we were searching for a new worship pastor, there was a sense that we had to lay out to our team and to our church where we felt like worship could go. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whenever we laid out D groups, uh, ministry and, and what God has got in store for us um, is a part of trying to see what he has in store for us and then do what it takes to make those uh, steps to put that into practice. And that's what we want to do uh, with our property, um, not for... Um, not for the glory of Seymour First Baptist or for our staff, but for the glory of God and to advance the gospel in and through Seymour. And so that that is what I'm excited about um, going forward. Amen. Yep. All right. We're going to call uh, call this one uh, done, <laughs> put this one uh, in the can, and uh, we thank you for tuning in to the Master Plan podcast today. Um, if, again, if you have any questions about any of this, I'm about to share with you a, an email that you could send us an email, uh, to follow up with. We'd be happy to talk to you about that anytime. And, uh, we're just excited about what God's doing here. And if you are in search of a, of a church home and you haven't found a place to land, we invite you to come check us out. You can find more again at seymourfbc.org. If you want to find out about the vision, seymourfbc.org backslash vision. And uh, give us a call or give us an email anytime, and we'd be happy to reach out to you. Thanks again for listening. Say bye, fellas. See ya. Yeah. Bye bye. Hey, listen. Thank you for listening to See More from the Front Pew. Our sole desire for this podcast is to glorify God by educating and encouraging His body. If you would like to learn more about anything you've heard today, feel free to reach out by email at staff at seymourfbc.org or by visiting our website at seymourfbc.org. If you're located near our community and do not have a church home, come worship with us at 1015 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, we pray God's richest blessings on you and yours as you love God, love others, make disciples, and live the life. <laughs>